Um, I'm Jill White, for those of you who don't know me, I'm from Melton West Primary School. I'm actually the ICT teacher there. This is completely getting out of my comfort zone. I'm not a music teacher, so I will start <laughs> off with that. Um, I started to have a think about incorporating some music into ICT classes uh, because we actually changed our art program last year to a science program. So officially we now have no specialist in the school that teaches the creative arts and that worried me a little. Um, teachers are obviously incorpor incorporating it into their classrooms, but I thought, how can I do that as well? So I started to play around with a few uh, different tools, particularly became interested in music creation because I think in conversations I'd had with students, they were more interested in consuming music, but not really in creating it. So I wanted, you know, embedding all of those authentic skills of digital citizenship and etiquette online um, and ethical use of music, I wanted to to show them some tools where they could be creators as well. So take a few through a few examples. Uh, the first one, if you haven't seen it, is Incredibox. I'll show you a quick video of how it works. So this was a very simple but very popular one, particularly um, with the older students, but we had grade ones as well using Incredibox. It's very limited in terms of it only produces this type of beatbox music, um, but it was the first time... Um, it was the first time particularly that I had a quiet room of grade five, six students. You could have heard a pin drop when they had their headphones on. Uh, and the really nice thing about it, it doesn't require sign-in, particularly to share their work. So when they, they can actually record their work, they can then just send it as a link, either by email or they can just copy the URL of the link. So we turned those into QR codes and put them on display around the school. So that was a, a good way to sort of get them hooked into the idea of music creation. Fairly easy, everyone was successful at it. We then moved on to Isle of Tune. Uh, which is available either as a website or as an iPad app. Um, I described it to the kids as SimCity meets Incredibox, now that they knew what Incredibox was. You basically build towns, and each of the features in your town makes a sound. So um, the houses and or the, the light bulbs or the lamps are basically drum beats, and they can be changed to different drum beats. The houses are sort of native sounds, so they might be dogs barking, those sorts of things. Uh, and the bushes and the trees are musical notes. So you can actually create quite complex songs or quite simple songs. Um, there are some little loops that you can feed in. So uh, again, they were very successful very quickly. Um, I'll show you one of the samples. This was a particularly popular one. drives past, that's when it activates the music. Um, so they did lots of testing of these. I'd like to say that was one that we created, but it wasn't. Um, there is a all-time leaderboard that has been voted on, and I really encouraged the students to go and look there first so that they could get inspiration. I, I did worry, would that put them off if they saw the amazing um, creations that were in there? But it actually set the bar really high, and some of them, who again do no homework, went home and apparently spent four or five hours on the computer making sure that they could make theirs work just the way they wanted it to. Uh, so I had a lot of success at that one. Again, doesn't require login, which is perfect, uh, and it shares exactly the same as Incredibox, so it just generates a link that you can then share however you want it to. We then kind of got a little more complex and I tried to think of a way to sell this to teachers because at the moment all it was was me having fun in the computer lab, the kids running out of the computer lab screaming, um, but not actually anything useful for the teachers in the classroom. So we looked at MadPad, which is only on the iPad. Um, it basically allows you to record small snippets um, of any environmental sounds that you have and then you can use those as a keyboard effectively. Um, and play them back. So some of the way, I'll show you the example first. This was one taken from YouTube, so again, it's an expert. I ran a, a little snippet. 
encourage them to use it as part of their storytelling or as part of their drama in their classrooms. So um, one of them was using it as a reader's theatre backup. So they had a sound effects person who sat at the front and gave the sound effects and it just added that extra dimension to what the students were doing. They weren't just reading text but they were having to actually think about them multimodally. Um, so that was a, a big plus as well. Uh, and we, I did have some students actually creating music so they'd recorded they tried to find different notes around the school by hitting different bits of metal with uh, different items of cutlery. So they were trying to actually record music. So had some different responses. This one um, was one one of my students actually stumbled across and recommended to me. It's only available on Google Chrome, which is not much use to me at school as we actually don't have Google Chrome. Um, but it was something that we did send out to the students and some of them has, have sent me links of, of their work. It kind of is the bridge or starting to bridge between the play tools and more formal music because where you place your, these are your instruments, and where you place them on the grid changes the tone and the pitch and the length of the notes. So it's starting to get into those conversations about more formal music but in a fairly informal way. So I'll give you a demonstration. demonstration this was mine done this morning <laughs> just to warn you in advance but again very easy to use I think what I liked about all of these tools is the students could be successful very quickly um, some of them get put off by tools that take a long time for them to learn or a long time for them to, to actually output something tool we used was GarageBand and the reason I left it to last is because it can be, it's an amazing tool, um, but it can be really, really complex, particularly the kids all go to it first on the iPads whenever they have any sandpit time they will go to it first and they leave it very quickly because they have a quick tap on the drums or they play the guitar and they think they're cool and then they go, oh, I don't really know how to use this and they tend to go off it quite quickly. So I did leave it to last until they were really immersed into the idea of music. And then what we did with it was create um, personal anthems. So we recorded their voice as a sample and then used that on the keyboard to um, change the pitch and the tone of their voice, recorded that as a track. We then added a drum beat track using the smart drum. So they got to um, learn a bit about quiet and loud and complex and simple drum beats. And then we added a loop. So through that we talked about um, Creative Commons, we talked about where you can get loops from, where you can't get loops from, um, what remixing means, all of those sorts of concepts. And it, it started them learning about multi-track um, setups, which I thought was really important, bridging into a music program if they wanted to. I know some of them are going into music programs in high school, so that was quite important. But it also gave them a foot into GarageBand, um, and a lot of them have taken it further, so which is good to know. Uh, the last link I will give you is kind of my cheat sheet because this is where I get a lot of it from. Uh, I went to, I think it was at ICTV, I went to a session um, that this lady ran on how to integrate music into your classroom and how to use it on iPads and all sorts of things. Um, she has got a fantastic blog that she does put lots of links up on. She has got a Twitter account, so she's worth following if you're interested in this sort of thing. And that is the end. <laughs>